Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Karat Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 1973 mob crime movie titled Mean Streets. Now, Mean Streets runs for one hour and 52 minutes long. It is directed by Martin Scorsese. The script was written by Martin Scorsese and Mardik Martin. The story was done by Martin Scorsese. It is produced by Jonathan Taplin. The cinematography by Kent L. Wakeford. And it was edited by Sidney Levin. And the stars of the movie are Harvey Keitel, Robert De Niro, David Proval, Amy Robinson, Victor Argo, Richard Romanes, Cesare De Nova, George Mimoli, Jenny Bell, Harry Northup, Martin Scorsese himself playing the role of Jimmy Shorts, and David Carradine. Okay, uh, we, we don't have too much time to talk about this one too much, so I'm going to try and go as fast as I could. So, Mean Street stars Harvey Keitel as Charlie Kappa, a young man living in the Little Italy section in New York who seems to have connections to the mob because his father is like one of the top mob bosses in one of the more prominent organizations in the Little Italy district in New York City. He is a conflicted individual who sometimes questions himself a lot regarding the people who are in his life and sometimes questions himself if he is in the right to hang out with the friends he chooses or should he just try to move on to better things in his life rather than just be stuck hanging around with a ragtag bunch of mafiosos hustling for money, paying off debts, and even just, you know, the fact that it's not exactly a glorified life that he has in store for him. On the one hand, you know, he loves his people, but on the other hand, he probably knows that he can do a lot better. On the one hand, he is a decent young man who everyone respects, not just because his uncle is one of the top mafioso guys who also runs a restaurant, but he also is not looking for special privileges just because his uncle is up there. He's a very morally inclined individual who pays his debts to society, has a lot of respect from his accolades, from his alliances, and probably even they feel that he might be above them. In more ways than one. Even though he's at the bottom tier. Of the mafia. It's just that. The thing is. Is that it's the people he hangs around with. Are not the most morally inclined. He also seems to be pretty much devoted to his Catholic beliefs. And sometimes believes that, you know, when he goes into the confession stand, the priest will only just tell him to say something like, Ten Hail Marys and Five Glory Bees. But what does that mean? That's just uh, a little slap on the wrist. I mean, he goes beyond. I mean, he actually, he actually sets his hands on fire. And if his hands burns then at least he knows what it's like to go to hell for lying. But he's an honest guy. And everyone likes him for it. 
And he seems to be firm and dedicated to his upbringing. And I know probably deep down inside, he probably would be better off being with other people and not having to deal with the people he hangs around with. And he has many, many chances of just getting out. But it seems that there is some kind of a, a family and friendship bond that keeps him in. Like, he probably doesn't have the guts to actually get out of something that he could drop, that he could, I mean, he could get out of it if he could. But there's some kind of gravitational pull that just keeps him in. His friends are, of course, you know, have really no profound interest in religion. And oh, he works for the Mafia because of his family connections, like his uncle. He does have a conscience. And he will do anything in his power to get out of it. And But he still would also like to run a restaurant. Even though it's under the management of his uncle Giovanni. Played by Cesare De Nova. And his uncle pretty much also knows and that, you know, like when he dies, he could probably run this restaurant that his uncle runs. Because he's pretty honest in the way he presents himself. And he seems to be highly respected by the people around him. But he's just so conflicted that he just doesn't seem to have the heart to just want to get away from it all. Charlie is too much to look at and admire him as a role model who believes that if he loans money to somebody you have to pay them back. He also hopes that his beliefs are a contribution to lead by example. And though he probably isn't a leader among words, he is a leader among examples. By way of contrast to Charlie is a friend of his, a friend who he has known for a long, long time, Johnny Boy, Johnny Boy Savello to be exact, played by Robert De Niro in his first collaboration with Martin Scorsese. You know, they went on to do a whole bunch of other movies following this, like Raging Bull, Goodfellas, Casino, and so on and so forth. De Niro plays Johnny Boy as an, unscrup an unscrupulous young man who has the pleasure of committing juvenile activities that something teenagers do. I mean, what kind of person who's in their mid to late 20s would do something mischievous and miscreantal like blowing up mailboxes? He causes trouble everywhere he goes. And he doesn't give a fuck what people think about him because he doesn't give a fuck. He has no real form of employment. But even he but even but even he doesn't he doesn't really give a shit either. Johnny Boy's ways of making money are from loaning money to people especially from one of the more higher-up mafioso guys by the name of Michael, played by Richard Romulus, who's a loan shark, who hangs out with guys who never met a gun they didn't like. I mean, he's like right up there. Maybe not at the tippy top, but he's, uh, 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 he's an inch higher... Than Charlie and Johnny Boy. 
And although he mostly seems to play off a very calm role most of the time in the movie and could fend off of Johnny Boy's verbal abuse and don't give a and don't give a flying fuck way of life. I still don't think he's the type of guy you don't want to push his buttons. Because if he plants a gun at you, you will be fucked in the face and turned sideways. Johnny Boy apparently owes a lot of money from these guys. And it's a wonder how he still is walking alive. I mean, if you owe money to the Mafia, you better pay up. Or you're going to have to pay with your life. These guys don't fuck around. So you better pay up. Or someone's going to have to shut you up. And I would take the first choice. But Johnny Boy, he takes life as a joke. He doesn't care which foot to step on. He'll probably step on the other one just to the throats. Just for the giggles and tits. So Charlie has been persuaded by Michael to convince him to pay back the money he owes. And apparently, just as I expected, things just don't go so well. Because obviously Johnny's head is hard as rock. And maybe just as smart. Tony, played by David Proval, is the owner of the bar. That's kind of like a welcoming place for the gang. Even though Tony just can't fucking stand Johnny Boy. And though he's not making a melting pot of cash, he feels it's better than living out in the cold, dirty, restless streets of NYC. He frequently likes to hang around with Charlie and Johnny Boy, but even he's the kind of guy who you don't really want to piss off. Charlie is also in a relationship with Johnny Boy's cousin. Uh, her name is Teresa, played by Amy Robinson. That's Charlie's love interest. Who doesn't sit very well with Charlie's family. And come to think of it, even her own cousin Johnny Boy also doesn't take too well with Charlie being in love with her. Maybe it could be because of jealousy, because of the fact that, hey, Charlie's got a got a girlfriend while he's practically a fucking man-child who doesn't have the maturity or the gumption to even get a to even get laid. But apparently her relationship with Charlie goes even more further problematic, which I kind of find to be a bit ableist and somewhat discriminatory. You see, their issue with Teresa is that she suffers from epileptic seizures, which to them makes her look like a freak. Even though we know that's all not true. In fact, Johnny Boy often labels her as sick in the head. Because of her epileptic seizures. Her epileptic withdrawals. Which is unjustified and very disrespectful. But Charlie doesn't seem to mind. Because he's in love with her. And wants to help. But yeah, I could seem to understand where things are going. Some people might think... Some people just don't understand the values in life that the people who are sick or who go through these 
conniptions. Well, you all know then, we all know that that it's just an illness that she suffers from. And that people who have epilepsy should have should get help. Not be condemned or chastised. But unfortunately, they all think she's some kind of freak. Teresa is also, like I mentioned before, Johnny Boy's cousin, which adds more doubt that Charlie should remain steady with her, according to Johnny Boy. And though he has a likeness with women and feels comfortable near them, he still doubts about getting married. I mean, probably what he does with all his money that he loans, you know, he wastes it all by going to movies, getting drunk, and refusing to pay back. Which would which would somehow, in some way, will get him into a whole deep pile of shit. Even if it means his life. He feels that getting romantically linked with women makes him feel weak and vulnerable. But Teresa likes Charlie because he's not like all the other people he hangs around with. She just doesn't fully understand him. But a lot of people don't seem to even understand Charlie why he continues to hang around with a pathetic loser like Johnny Boy. Who is not only just a pathetic loser, he's also bad news and gives bad vibes. Now, what makes Mean Streets a little bit more contrary to the other gangster movies is that there isn't a major blood count in this movie. There isn't a major body count in this movie, unlike the other movies like Casino and Goodfellas. I know I like to bring those two up because there's a lot of, of violence in those movies, even though they seem to also stretch out beyond the two-hour time limit. But it, it plays off kind of more closer to a character drama with a little gangster theme to it. And that these particular individuals and how they go about their daily lives, which sets them apart from others in society. I mean, their ways of life, and I'm not just... I'm not, I'm not talking about like gangster life, and it doesn't necessarily actually necessarily mean that I'm speaking on behalf of just Italians. I mean, gangsters can come in many different ethnicities. There's the Russian Mafia, there's the Irish Mafia, Black Mafia, you name it. They come in all different, they come in all different ethnicities. But since this is set in Little Italy, In the Italian community. And from what I've gathered. I think the setting. According to an interview with uh, Marty Scorsese. Was that it was set. I believe September 18, 1968. At the San Gennaro Festival. Which they have there in Little Italy. In a film where the characters are predominantly Italian-Americans living in the Little Italy section of Manhattan, they feel that violence is the only way to survive and to get their messages across. But you don't see too much of that. But you do see tensions grow. You do see hostilities arise. And you do see, and you do see that these people, I'm not saying they're all like that, but I'm saying that these people in the Mafia are not people you don't want to, you don't want to fuck around with. 
There is no room for the weak. There is friendship. But it comes at a price. And if you, and if you don't pay the price. Well there's always your life you can pay with. When it comes to unity. Well that's another question. In this movie, Charlie might probably be one of the smarter and more likable of all the characters in the movie. But I also pity him because he's also the most vulnerable. Is it because of out of his own merits? Or is it because he could get out, but he has doesn't have the guts? Though no fault of his own, he tends to hang out with the wrong crowd. And many of them don't follow his examples or really give a shit or faith in religion. I know I'm going to hell when I die. And even though he might stand out as a better man among the people he hangs around with, he still can't let go of them because he's so closely connected to them. And he just doesn't have the, the willpower to walk away from them. When yet really he could. He just doesn't want to. I don't know if it's because he can't. He just, or maybe, he just, like I said before, he just doesn't want to. To them, he is the voice of reason. And maybe this could be for his own selfish purposes. Just to make himself feel more better than everyone else. But just to avoid them committing violent acts that they might regret sooner than later. Uncle Giovanni doesn't like the idea that Charlie constantly hangs around with a miscreant like Johnny Boy or the idea of helping him out when he refuses to change his ways. Johnny Boy is a pathetic idiot who's irreparable beyond words. He is the wedge that's holding Charlie back from his goals and ambitions. But Charlie would rather hang out with Johnny Boy so I'm beginning to wonder, whose fault is this? Even I'm pretty conflicted in that analogy. Which is why Giovanni turns Charlie away from him. Even though he's told him many times to get away from him, Charlie still is hanging around with him. So Giovanni says he practically has no use for Charlie either. He's not the only one turning Charlie. As Michael has turned away from Charlie... Due to Charlie for falling in, for failing to come to terms with Johnny Boy, who still needs to pay off his debts, even though Johnny's practically just walking all over him. To Michael, he feels Charlie let him down, which makes him not part of the solution, but part of the problem. By far, Mean Streets is a gangster film that really depends on on raw energy and feels more authentic compared to other gangster films. It's not heavy on violence, it's pretty more dialect, dialogue oriented. And that's kind of why it sticks out, because of its unpredictable nature and that each scene flows like a day-to-day -day scenario compared to an important event that leads to something climactic to keep the story flowing. The realness is what makes these gangsters stand out. What you read in the tabloids about gangsters lacking class or flashiness who aren't afraid of what's coming from them. In reality, they are quite concerned about their surroundings, fearing their lives are in danger, and at one small error, they could be end up thrown in the shark tank. That's a figure of speech. Or it could even be literal. And Charlie's character is a real one that's neither superficial or caricature. Everything just feels fresh and authentic. And this is one of the reasons why Mean Streets actually might stand out as among one of the great classics in gangster film. It's not heavy on violence. It's... 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 Pretty tame compared to Goodfellas or 
Casino or the or even the TV series The Sopranos or any other mafia related type movies. So um and I guess you gotta say, you know, I gotta hand out that the performances were very good. Uh Harvey Keitel was pretty good in his starring role. Even though I always feel him to be a little more stronger as a supporting actor, nothing wrong with that. Robert De Niro, we can tell that from his performance, there's going to be a lot of great things to come for him. And, uh, you know, the other cast members all seem to be doing pretty quite well in their roles. No one is not, I didn't feel any flaws in the performances. So in all this said and done, if I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, I would give Mean Streets from 1973 a 9 out of 10. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And now we'll be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Rutt, writer, saying keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.